The powerful and fearsome hairy hominid known as the Falk Monster roams the southwest region of Arkansas. Prior to the early 1970s, it was known as the Jonesville Monster, based on the town where it was initially sighted. Many have labeled it the Southern Sasquatch. It's described as a giant human-like ape creature with long arms, long dark hair, three toes on each foot, and bright red eyes the size of silver dollars. It's said to walk with a shuffling gait and run in a hunched or slouched posture while swinging its arms like a primate. The initial reports describe the creature as seven feet tall and up to 300 pounds with a chest that was approximately three foot in width. Later accounts would describe a creature upwards of 10 feet tall, pushing close to 800 pounds, likely five to 10 times more powerful than the strongest human and able to rip a human limb from limb. Through the decades, there has been numerous reports of witnesses shooting at the creature with no blood trail or corpse to be discovered. It's thought that it's thick hair, thick skin, and incredibly dense and powerful muscle and skeletal structure make it nearly immune to small firearms. Witnesses have stated that the creature has a foul odor, a mix between a wet dog and a skunk. Despite all the similarities to Sasquatch or Bigfoot, these hairy hominids have glowing red eyes the size of silver dollars. It's said to have a terrifying roar very similar to a large lion or a cross between a lion and a bear. Although there are no audio recordings of this creature's roar or vocalizations, this is purported to be a sample put together by a witness that sounds very similar to what they heard in the woods at night. If that's anything close to what the real Falk monster sounds like, it's no wonder that many witnesses are found in a state of shock and panic. It's important to establish the first encounter or sighting with any cryptid, but with the Falk monster, it goes back to what's considered to be a recollection of sorts. In 1908, a woman living near Falk, Arkansas, reported to have seen a creature fitting the description of the Falk monster when she was 10 years old. The witness accounts for the Falk monster fall into two categories, and the determining factor is whether or not the witness accounts were collected prior to May of 1971 or thereafter. May of 1971 is when the story began to become public knowledge that there was a Falk monster at all. And in fact, the sensationalism of the newspaper in, after 1971 drove the vast majority of the witness accounts thereafter. Due to the sheer number of witness accounts, we're going to focus on those that either provide evidence that can be looked into or add something significant to the monster's legend overall. The initial 1908 witness recollection is considered to be questionable at best, but there is a lesser known fact that lends some credibility to this person's story. Along with the recollection of spotting this creature comes the story that they were told about a circus train derailment and the possibility that some unusual or wild creature was let loose during the accident. I have to admit, I didn't feel that the legend of a circus train derailment had any credibility. I'd heard this before, a circus train derails, some sort of monster, a wild animal gets loose, and I just didn't feel like it was a viable story. Initially, I couldn't locate any newspaper articles dating back before 1908 that talked about a train derailment anywhere in Arkansas, but I eventually stumbled across a website that lists all of the circus train derailments that have occurred to date. And in fact, the Carl Hagenbeck Circus unfortunately derailed October 25th, 1906 at Tiger Creek, Arkansas. Since it was over 100 years ago, there was no direct connection between the Falk Monster and the Circus Train, but it did lend some credibility to the 1908 account. 24 years later, when the 1932 sighting had occurred, Jonesville, Arkansas was sparsely populated. In fact, Falk, Arkansas barely hit 350 people. 
The surrounding swamps and bayous were extremely thick and they were uncharted for the most part. Only experienced hunters dare travel into those areas and very few of them would do so in the evening. The area is dominated by the Sulphur River. To the southwest is Mercer Bayou and to the northeast is Boggy Creek. There was still a substantial black bear population and mountain lion population in Arkansas, although by 1920 most of the wildlife had been culled in order to preserve the livestock of the surrounding farms. By 1971 numerous accounts of this creature had been reported predominantly in the area of Jonesville, just on the other side of Boggy Creek and the Sulphur River. Up until this point, it was being called the Jonesville Monster, despite the creature being sighted in both Falk and Jonesville. This would all change, though, with the attack on the Ford's rental property. The creature would be so bold as to reach through the window and attempt to attack Mrs. Ford while sleeping. The Bobby Ford family had moved into the house less than a week before. The men had been out hunting when they heard a woman scream at the house. As the men rushed in to see what was wrong, Ford saw a creature standing outside that stood seven feet tall and was three foot across at the chest. The creature suddenly lunged at Bobby. He panicked and ran right through the front door made of glass and wood. The other men seeing Bobby panic and noticing the creature standing outside began to shoot at it, firing seven times. They figured they had wounded it, but no blood was found at the scene. When Falk Constable Ernest Walraven showed up, the men were in sheer panic and shock. They were so scared to be alone that night that the constable loaned them a gun and extra ammunition in case the creature came back before morning. Despite incidents in the past being in the local paper, this particular story would reach nationwide. Jim Powell was a reporter for the Texarkana Gazette and Daily News. He is credited with coming up with the name of the creature and calling it the Falk Monster. The attack at the Ford rental property would go so far as to making it into the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek. Within a month of the Ford incident, the town of Falk was a circus of activity. There was a radio station in Little Rock offering a reward of up to $1,000 if anyone could find the monster. There were people running around the town with weapons and dogs trying to capture the creature in the local swamps. They were running around shooting at anything that moved in the bushes. A rumor was circulating that a circus train had derailed along the Sulphur River just years before and some sort of a creature escaped. But we know now that they're referring accidentally to the 1906 derailment that happened hundreds of miles away. It's at this time that the majority of the hoaxes began to be perpetrated. One in particular involving three men ended up with them receiving a ticket for filing a fraudulent monster report at $59 apiece. It was in this chaotic atmosphere of June 1971 that Willie Smith claimed to have found footprints in his soybean field. The Arkansas Gazette reporter Jim Powell accompanied Willie Smith to his soybean field and he mentioned that the tracks were strange. They were all in a line and they didn't step on any of his plants. The footprints found in Willie Smith's soybean field had three toes. He made a mold of the prints and sold them as souvenirs at his local service station. Miller County Sheriff Greer came to the Willie's Beanfield with the local game warden. They were not able to verify or identify the animal tracks they found. By 1986, Sheriff Greer and Falk Mayor Virgil Roberts would state that they believe the tracks left in Willie's Field were man-made. Frank Schombach, an archaeologist at Southern State College, would state that there is a 99% chance the tracks are a hoax. Other experts would cite the simple fact that there are no primates with three toes. In fact, all primates, including hominids, have five toes. From 1971 to 1991, there would be fewer than 10 reported sightings of the Falk monster. In November of 1991, two hunters discover a large skeleton in the woods south of Falk, 52 miles away in Karnak, Texas. The majority of the skeleton is intact except for the head, the tail, and the claws which are missing. Suspecting that the bones might belong to the alleged Falk monster, the hunters take the bones from the property and give them to local monster hunter Smoky Crabtree of Falk. On a May 2005 episode of the radio show Coast to Coast, 
Smoky Crabtree would clarify that the skeleton had four toes on it in contrast to some of the three-toed tracks that had been also seen in the area. There's very little photographic evidence of this skeleton. The only picture that exists is the picture shown here. The experts who had a chance to look at the skeleton in depth said that the legs were articulated in the way that a large cat would be, such as a lion or possibly an oversized mountain lion. Since the early 90s, there's only been one significant sighting, and that was the 2004 sighting of the creature along the side of the Sulphur River. Approximately one week after the initial sighting along the Sulphur River, Doyle Holmes would discover the creature once again while hunting wild boar with his son. After returning home safely with his son, Doyle was determined to try to find evidence that the creature existed. The next day, he would go out with plaster and try to capture a track. Unfortunately, the combination of bad weather overnight and the boars along the riverbank had damaged the majority of the tracks, but he was able to get one print. When I got home that night, I actually pondered what had just happened, what we had just found. And you start to think, okay, how are we going to prove this? You can tell people what you've seen and they're not necessarily gonna believe it unless you have proof. The proof was the muddy footprints on the banks of the lake. When the weather turned bad two nights later, Doyle had to move fast. Armed with a bag of plaster and a revolver on his hip, he went back into the woods, this time alone. It was starting to get dark, it was starting to rain, and uh, it was cold. I was kind of nervous going back when I did, but I had to get the track. I needed to get the track and, and preserve it. When I got down there, I found that the hogs had been back through there, and I was only able to find one good track left that I could preserve. I brought it home and let it, let it dry. And a few hours later, I took the cast out, and I couldn't believe what I had. I couldn't believe it had turned out as good as it did. It's proof that is more difficult to explain away. It is something that is tangible, that you can touch. This is what's down there. Something is making these tracks. Whether or not there's proof or evidence that would satisfy a skeptic that the Falk monster truly exists, there is a long history of strange sightings in Arkansas. Going all the way back to 1726, there's a mention of a he-beast in the woods of Arkansas. There's two other reports of these hairy man-beasts in parts of Arkansas. In 1851, the Memphis Enquirer reported a creature spotted by hunters in Greene County. They are quoted as saying he was of gigantic stature, the body being covered with hair and the head with long locks that fairly enveloped his neck and shoulders. Five years later, in 1856, the Cotto Gazette reported the following beast in the Upper Red River region. The sensational quote is as follows. A stout athletic man about six feet four inches in height completely covered with hair of a brownish cast about four to six inches long. He was well muscled and ran up the bank with the fleetness of a deer. In an instant he dragged the hunter to the ground and tore him in a most dreadful manner, scratching out one of his eyes and injuring the other so much that his comrades despair of the recovery of his sight and biting large pieces out of his shoulder in various parts of his body. Whether or not there's enough evidence to clearly support the Falk monster as being a reality, there is one thing that is clear. People have been seeing something terrifying in the deep woods of Arkansas for many years.